Hello and welcome to Cheshire Audio. Now um, this could be this could turn out to be quite a long video because um, what I'm going to do is go through some of the cartridges that are fitted to Riga turntables. I do get quite a lot of old decks in and quite often they've got an original cartridge on. Um, I mean they could be dating back to early 80s, late 70s even sometimes and um, I do get asked by customers what, well, what's a, what's a modern equivalent to this cartridge? I've got a, you know, an, old, an older deck, and sometimes they don't know what the cartridge is. So um, I mean, it might have been on there for 30, 40 years. Um, so this, I'm going to go through. I've got, I'm a, I tend to, I tend never to throw anything away. So I've got a selection of quite a lot of old cartridges that I've, I just sort of keep to hand. Uh, so I'll be able to show you what they look like and sort of go through timelines and modern equivalents, and hopefully that will be helpful. Um, where I haven't got a cartridge, I'll probably put. I'll, well, I'll, I'll probably post up pictures anyway because this this camera doesn't really do uh, macro shots very well. So I'll I'll do it with the ordinary camera and then I'll put in some some stills of, of, of specific models as well. Right, so um, I'll reset the camera and we'll we'll have a look. Right, here we go. Um, this is my motley collection of um, sort of cartridges off turntables where people have upgraded and I've just kept, kept the old cartridge really. Uh, very tired and worn out most of them. Some of them work okay but uh, generally cartridges when they get to get beyond about five or six years they, they lose lose dynamics, they lose tracking ability and all that sort of thing. They still sound quite nice and clear but sometimes they just, well usually they'll, it's the suspension that dies. not necessarily wear that, does, that kills cartridges, it's um, the suspension tends to sort of fade after a while and stiffen up. It's a bit like it's a bit like the dampers on your car going. It's sort of they won't they don't track properly. You know, you get a rough ride rather than a, a smooth ride and it um, it's all down to tracking. Um yeah, Riga cartridges, if we go back to sort of 1980, um Riga produced the first cartridge. Um I mean they've been making turntables since 1973 but it took until 1980 for them to actually release a cartridge. They didn't actually make it. Um, it was produced um, for them by a company called Supex in Japan. Um, then there was a few cartridges that, that used the, Sup the Supex sort of body, I suppose, really. Um, this, is the, this, is the, this, is the, this is the Riga, put the fingers. Um, yeah, this is the R100. These are really common, see loads of these. Um, and it's, it was produced from 1980 to 1985, so it was only five years, but uh, I see these regularly, uh, probably two or three a month will come in on, on decks, there's one downstairs just come in, it's, it's never had new styles on it and it does sound soft and lethargic and it's, it sounds, I mean it doesn't dis, it doesn't distort but it's just very very soft sounding to what it was but because this, this was a good cartridge, it was one of my favourite favourites of the Rigas actually at the time and favourite of you know, comparing to the competition, it was a really good cartridge. Um, but it was like I said, it was, based, it was made by Supex for a uh, two Riga specification. Uh, if you want to improve, if you've got one of these and you want to replace it, you'd be looking at uh, a Riga release, at least two. Uh, from Audio Technica, there's things like the, the VMS 95EN, which is the elliptical nude version of that cartridge. There's uh, Nagoka, the, the Nagoka MP110. Uh, you can put on Things like the Autofon 2M red, 2M blue. The blue is probably an equivalent to one of these, but I've never been that never been that sure that the blues actually suit suit Regas very well. The, 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 the 2M range actually suits Regas very well. The older range did, which we've got an, uh, an example of here, I think. But uh, but not this, not so much the 2Ms. Apart from that, you have to put a spacer in to, to level everything up. Um, so yeah, that's the R100. Um, Right, for a, short, for a short time, after the R100 finished, uh, they, they made another, there was another cartridge produced, this is called the RB100. Now these are actually very rare, I don't, you don't hardly ever see these. Um, one reason was, it wasn't actually very good, I, I really didn't like this when it came out. Um, it might look a bit familiar in a way, because it's, it's, the, the body shape is actually quite similar to um, the gold ring range and that's because it was actually made for them by Goldring in the UK so it was um, it is actually based on a Goldring cartridge this is a thousand series which they still make this has been produced they've been producing these since the 80s st still in production 
Um, but yeah, the, the Riga version, to me, it just sounded very, it was very, very smooth and very, very refined to the point of, of being bland and boring, really. I, I, I thought it was a bit of a mistake, was a mistake when this came out, and I really, really miss the old the old R hundred. You know, I don't think I ever really sold any. They never really recommended it, uh, and that lasted for two years. So obviously, I think Riga Riga agreed, so it didn't, didn't actually last very long. Um, again, if you've got one of these, you want to um, replace it. You will be again probably looking probably a bias. Well, I'm just say bias cartridge. They've just finished the bias cartridge, so not a bias cartridge. Uh, possibly, yeah, at least at least two cartridge. Um, again, AT ninety five, the VM ninety five. Audio Technica, so the probably the EN or even the E actually, the E would probably be outperform this when it was new. Um, uh, Goldring uh, E1, Goldring E3, I tend not to do the two, but either of those would be a good, a good alternative. Um, because Goldring's got a similar smooth sort of smooth sort of sound to this, but it's it's not got the sort of lifelessness that this has got. So that's the that's the LB100. Um, so produced between eighty five and eighty seven. Around the around the sort of mid to late eighties, uh, Riga actually then brought out the original Bias, which is the, the green one. Uh, this was about nine eighty seven. This came out, uh, and also the the original Lease. Now these were these both were produced in house. Um, Really good, actually. Both both of these really good. Slightly, I think you could you could argue they were slightly aggressive sounding, but they were um, very musically dynamic, very engaging to listen to, and you sort of forgave them the fact they sounded a bit rough and ready because um, they, they actually did sort of added this sort of enjoy enjoyment factor to the music, which you know this musicality thing that you, you hear about. Um, so both the yeah both great sort of improvements over the over the RB hundred certainly, um, and also the. Also around the same time, um, we had a and Cambridge, uh, so we got this a and C77, this was the budget the budget model from A&R, um, also in the same range, there was a, there was a, this is the C77 which is Chronicle Tip stylus, uh, the red stylus version, then there was a blue which was an elliptical, the E77, and then the, most, the best selling of all. Uh, there's more, probably more Rigas out there with this cartridge on than, than any other. Actually, this is the P77, the parabolic tip, and uh, A and R is is what is now Arcam. Um, obviously, they're more into their amplifiers and uh, CD, whatever they're making now, surround sound amplifiers and that sort of thing. But at the time, they, they, they had a really good reputation for cartridges. Although this is actually again based on uh, based on the Supex, like like the original Riga R100 was. Um, so yeah, it, either of these two, um, if you've got one of these, C77, probably Audio Technica VM 95E, they're sort of budget elliptical, um, a good replacement, or a, say a Goldring E1, uh, the P77, you'd be quite a way up actually in the range, probably a, a, an Audio Technica VM 95, either an EN, the uh, elliptical nude, or the uh, 95 ml which is a micro line which is more in, m more similar to the profile of this one really um also probably you, you, know, you could look at this you could probably replace with a an agoka 110 mp 110 150 even um also around this sort of time we had the early lin k9 cartridge which uh was made by audi technica um Really good, actually. I, really, I used to really like the, the original Lin. I think the, the very first one was a bit, a little bit bright. Later incarnations of it uh, went to slightly, had a slightly better tip on, and the, the actual grey-bodied versions I always thought sounded a little bit more, more sort of accurate and uh, a bit smoother, really. Um, there's a K5, which I can't. If I had my glasses, I could tell you which one this is. I think that's a K9, and the K5. Yeah, I think it is. Can't see, but the yeah, K9, K5. The K5 is a, is a lower, sort of lower quality profile on the tip. Again, like I said, both made by Audio Technica. You can actually, um, if you've got, I mean, I'd say more more with the, with the K, more with the K9 really, because it's, uh, that's got the metal body. The K5 is a plastic body. If you've got a K9, um, a good thing to do is actually replace it because the the, the stylus for the VM. 
95 range of Audio Technica actually fits it because it's actually it's kind of based on the, the body that, on the K9 is is very very similar to the modern VM. So you can just replace the stylus. Whether you do or not is up to you. It's, uh, I think you do, would get the benefit of the metal body because the VM range uses plastic body like a K5. So you could have a much better quality tip on a metal body. So that's quite an interesting, quite an interesting little little quirk of the design that it actually does fit. Right after the lens, we've got um, the go kit. I mean, this was a this was a, a really good selling cartridge. This is a, an, an MP11 boron, which is a boron cantilever. Um, there was also a standard standard MP11. There was an, an MP10, uh, which was a sort of budget version. Um, I didn't like the boron actually. I always thought the boron cantilever version, but they used, they used to call them an MP11 borings. Uh, which is a bit unfair, probably, but uh, very overly smooth. A little bit like the early Riga, but not quite to that degree. A bit overly smooth. The problem with it was it did get brilliant reviews at the time, so everybody wanted one, and it was very difficult to persuade them that perhaps it wasn't the best cartridge around at the time. Uh, actually preferred the standard MP11 to this. Now, funnily enough, the modern-day Nagokas are superb, and the Looking at them, there's hardly any difference in design, but the, the modern ones sound amazing. Uh, so quite why this was, you know, quite so well, quite so poor sounding at the time, I don't know. But um, yeah, so if you've got one of these, you can just replace the stylus with the modern version of the of the, the MP110 stylus or an O150 stylus. So that's upgradable from uh, with with a, with a newly manufactured stylus. It's not the same as it is in it, but it, it, it fits. It, it, it is a good fit. Um, also, around this time, we've got early days of the Goldring 1000 series. Um, now, there's various versions of these. This is a, a 1012, there's 1006, there's 1022, uh, 1022GX, there's 1042, which is the most popular one. Uh, all different styles, profiles. Uh, these are very smooth sounding cartridges. I mean, not as smooth as I was saying with the, the Riga, but it's a very smooth sound. Got very, very strong following for Golder in there. Um, a lot of people still use them. I sell a lot of a lot of the stylized for these for these and it's on cartridges that people probably have 20, 30 plus years. Um, yeah, it's good sound. It's a bit expensive nowadays, I think. They had a few quite big price rises and um, I don't think it's quite, as a new cartridge, they're quite as, as sort of competitive as they used to be. Um, there's got various different derivatives of it, I mean, apart from the Riga, there was also a Roxanne version of it, um, which the style I aren't particularly compatible, interchangeable between. Um, what else would you have had on an early Riga? Also, we've got that old early Audio Technicas, this is a 95E, these were produced for years. There was also the 93, uh, which is a same colour as the Audio Tech, uh, there's a lane actually. Um, the 93s was, was a really budget version, but there's also a Lin badge version of it called the Basic. Um, the replacement for one of those would be, a, well, a direct replacement actually is a, v, a VM95E, which is kind of the same cartridge really, sort of updated version of it, slightly more rigid. Also, there was quite a lot at the, in the early days of Grado, Grado GT, this isn't a GT Super, but the, G, the GT Super, the blue bodied one, was, was very common. I'm um, not a great fan of Grado, I think they, they do have a few issues, they do tend to pick up noise very easily. Um, and I believe modern day Grado has certain, certain issues with quality control. But you know, you don't really see them much in the UK now, these seem to have seem to have fizzled out quite a bit. But if you've got an old Grado, you can buy a new Grado, there's various various ones. Style I are interchangeable on these, but they use a, a very odd... Um, Compound, if I can get one out, I can't get it out. They use a straight, it's, it's like a cassette thing, it slides out, and they use a sort of compound to damp it. And quite often, when you take it out, the compound gets onto the contacts, and you, it, it never quite sounds right afterwards. Uh, but you can replace the start by, but really, probably, if you replace one of those, that's, if it was a GT Super, you'd be looking at an 1895E, uh, sorry, I keep calling it an 1895 a VM95E, as, as now is. Um, Probably, possibly even a Riga, Riga Carbon, something like that, really, which is a, a much better cartridge than it should be for the money. Um, what about to, oh, the other, the other Audio Technica that crops up occasionally? This is the, the 110E, which is a sort of a better version of a, 
95e, really better profile. Uh, loads of these around out. These used to be um, supplied as a standard fit for a lot of Japanese turntables. Um, a lot of Technics and JVCs and Hitachis seem to come with these as a standard. Uh, it's actually very good though. It's a good. It's, um, you probably modern cartridge to replace this. I would have thought probably again Audio Technica uh, 95 95 E R E N. So we're between those two really. Um, possibly Nagoka. The Goku 110, MP110 would be a good replacement for it. Um, probably not up as high as something, I don't know. Um, don't really, really, probably wouldn't go any higher than that. Uh, where about I'm losing track of where I'm up to a little bit? Well, one of my favourite cartridges from that year, which you probably nobody would know what it is, this is um, an Elite 800. Now, there was a range of these. One of the best cartridges I ever owned, I think, in Magnum Music Magnet, was the Elite 700. Which I thought I had one of, but I couldn't actually find it. But um, this Elite is, was the original name for what is now, um, it's basically Max Townsend. It's um, Townsend that make the, the the rock turntable. They make various accessories like platform um, isolation platforms and cables and various things. But they're, they're quite a high end company. But they, this cartridge was produced. I don't know what the actual Heritage of this was originally well, who actually made it uh, for them, but uh, these were excellent. They're really, really good cartridges. Moving magnets, obviously. Uh, 800, I don't, I don't remember much of, but one of these came in on a deck. Um, I had all these had a 500, which was a, a yellow stylus um, rather than the orange, and yeah, let's like say the 700, which I think was black, or was it white? Memory's going, but yeah, superb, superb range. If you've got one of these, um, certainly the 700, you would need at the very least an Audio Technica 740 ML, uh, probably a Riga, a Riga Exact, um, an MP200 Nagoka, um, probably a 2M Bronze sort of autophon, something of, of that sort of area. But they, 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 these were absolutely excellent. They sounded, they sounded like a good moving coil. Um, but a bit short-lived, didn't seem to be, be available for very long. So prob probably, weren't, probably weren't making any money on them, I would guess. Um, the other, another one that's quite common on old decks, uh, Autophon VMS-20. Uh, this, this must have won every every award going at the time. It was every every review, this was, this was the cartridge to buy. Hateful thing, I just don't like it. I never, never liked the VMS-20. Um, very bright sounding thing. Some people love that though, it's very, it's a very bright sounding cartridge. Um, to me it was just too much, it seemed to have too much of a lift in the treble and it was just, just too much of a good thing really. Um, replace that again, probably, I seem to be pushing the Audio Technicas here, but it's just, they've just got a very, very good range at the moment. Uh, we'll probably replace that with a, a VMS Okay, not a VMS. <laughs> this is a VMS with a VM ninety five E or EN. Probably, possibly Nagoka one ten. Um, you know, Goldring E three, that sort of level. Um, but would sound very different to this because this is like I say, it's quite a bright sounding cartridge. So, if you've got used to that, you might might feel as though you're losing losing out on treble. But actually, this is just a bit overblown really in that respect. Um, I think what we up to oh yeah later 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 one of my favourite autophon ranges this was the um, 500 series these two hands to close up nice integrated um, stars protector there this is a 510 there's a right there's 525 35 40 these are superb you saw loads of these um, I actually prefer this to the 2M range this, this was replaced by the 2M range but I actually prefer this range um, much easier to fit. No problems with needing spaces. Um, suited the Riga a lot better than I think the term range did. Uh, 540 was a phenomenal thing. And with the 510s, these were about £30 in the 90s. Um, great sounding cartridge for the money, really. Um, stylus is interchangeable, you can change the stylus on these. It's still available, I think. Very, very difficult to get off though. It's a, it's a very tight fit stylus. And I've actually I've actually broken styli on these trying to take trying to take off the the third of cartridge, the stars carry because it's all this front end comes away. And it's, you have to get your fingers in and really pull on it to get it out. Um, yeah, probably a modern equivalent to this would be uh, Autophon 2M Red. Um, again, Audio Technica 
95e probably the yen actually with thinking about this because it, it is really good for the money I mean, it's a sort of equivalent in price i would have said to a uh, the 95e but it's um more like an en in performance um so that's that i think we're nearly done so yeah riga cartridges just a quick run run through riga cartridges r100 rb100 then they went to bias and elise um after this there was a, a red version called the Super Bias and a blue version called the Super Elise, which then became, after sort of another upgrade, became um, the Bias 2, which was blue, and then the Elise, um, sorry, the Bias 2, which was red, and then the Elise 2, which was blue. So if you've got either a blue or red, cartridge of this shape body it'll either be if it's if it if you've had it a fair few years because the super bias was produced in about 98 from about 1992 and the super release from the same from about 1992 until 2004 so it had about a, it had about a 12 they, they both had about a 12 year run before they became bias 2 and Elise 2 um, so if you've had it so sort of since the 90s and it's red it'll be a, a super bias if it's I've had it since the 90s and it's and it's blue, it'll be a, a, a Super Elise. Super Elise is quite rare, I don't see those very often. Very difficult to tell them apart from the, the new versions. Um, and the Elise had the three-point mount, right from the start had the three-point mount, that hole at the front there is uh, partly for locating, for alignment, but also it makes it gives you a three-point mount, which is more, much more, more stable. Um, modern equivalent of these, this still, apart from the bias, the Elise is still produced, um, the blue version there. How much longer for? I'm not sure because I, I can see that coming to an end fairly sh shortly because it's been in production since 2004, um, and the exact as well, which is the yellow, the yellow version of that body with a three-point mount and, a, and a, a much better tip on. I think it's might be a vital tip on a on an exact. Um, so yeah, I think that's about it really. I mean, I haven't covered moving coil. Um, there are other models that that do crop up on old, older Rigas, but I think this, this kind of covers pretty much most of the major ones um, so yeah hopefully that's hopefully that's been helpful um, like I say a bit of a, a bit of a guilty secret me keeping all, keeping hold of all these old cartridges and probably most of these like all in K5s, K9s I've probably got four or five of each um, certainly all 100 I must have must have ten, about ten of those now um, can't throw things away but anyway it's, uh, it's allowed me to do this little video so yeah, thanks for thanks for watching. Hope um, hope you enjoyed it. Um, don't forget to subscribe and or give us a like if you like what you what you've seen. Um, I'll uh, put our phone number along along the bottom of here and and email address just so you can contact us if you need any help. Uh, I tend to say email email or give us a call if you want any advice on anything. And I wouldn't tend to put things in comments because I don't. I don't often see those very quickly, so uh, if you want a quicker, quicker response, email or phone is always, always ideal. Always, always glad to, to have a chat. Um, yeah, thanks very much. Um, see you soon.